What's happening? Thanks for having me here. Um, I love coming and, uh, and talking to groups like this. You guys are at the most fun, oh, we're gonna do a pose? You guys are at the most fun stage of, of the company, so many of you, where there's just a few of you and everything is possible and there are no barnacles on the organization or the product or the processes yet and you're, you know, you're up all night and you're out of printer paper and you're the CEO and you're buying the printer paper and all that stuff and it's an amazing time for the company. So why do I wanna come here and talk to you now for just a few minutes before right before lunch about how to lead when there's like two or three of you and you're looking at each other and saying, you know, are you the leader or am I the leader? Why is that important? Because the reason, the reason it's important is because even at this stage, as you go from two people to N people, if you don't deal with these things, dysfunction becomes embedded in your company and that dysfunction becomes learned and part of the culture of the company, and it's almost impossible to eradicate it. So I'm gonna to talk to you about two specific things that I want you to take away from here today about how to manage and how to lead in your companies. The first is a paradox, and it's the ultimate paradox of being a manager or a leader, and it is quite simply this. As a leader, you need to care deeply, deeply about your people while not worrying or really even caring about what they think about you. Managing by trying to be liked is the path to ruin. And that's easy to say, and it's easy to maybe you even think like, yeah, I do that, I'm very direct with people. But the reality is there are all these little ways that managing by trying to be liked or telling people what they want to hear creeps into the organization. And you're gonna walk down the hall and talk to your co-founder about something they did that annoyed you the other day or something this person just hired did that they need to change. And as you start to walk down the hall, you think, ah, they're busy. Ah, they're working on all this stuff. Ah, they look like they're having a rough morning. I'll talk to them tomorrow about it. Or you're trying to create some award and it's between two people and the way you deal with it is instead of getting them both in the room and talking about the fact that, hey, there's, we, have to go, we have to go do this thing and you're gonna do it, I need you to do this, you kind of tell the two people two different things. You go to the first person and say, hey, we need to go do this thing, I've decided you're gonna do it, and then you call the second person in the room and say, listen, nobody wants you to do this more than I do, but right now I gotta let this other person do it, but don't worry, you're gonna get the next thing. Don't lead that way. Don't lead by trying to be liked. Lead by being forthright. The way you build trust with your team and your people is by being forthright and clear with them from day one and communicating with them based on clarity, not based on, I hope they perceive this in a positive way and I hope they leave the room with me feeling good. That's the most important management tip I can give you is an understanding of that paradox and how important it is to care so deeply about your team while not worrying about what they think about you. The second thing I wanna tell you, and it's critical here in San Francisco, in technology and in Silicon Valley, is this. There are many different ways to be successful, okay? And the problem here in San Francisco and in Silicon Valley is we lionize these personalities and we set these people up to be these amazing leaders who are geniuses and they're doing everything right and then books are written about them that are produced that show us how to do things the way they do it. And they're constantly on TV and in the media when things are going really, really well. And this is how this person does this thing and this is why they do it this way. And we take notes and we feverishly try to imitate what they've done to be successful. The reality is these people are the same people they were 10 years ago and are going to be 10 years from now when it may not work at all for them. The very same person they are today that's lionized may be frowned upon 10 years from now or was frowned upon 10 years earlier. So it's absolutely critical as you guys try to create your companies and your cultures 
that you absolutely internalize this fact. There are many different ways to be successful. I was having a conversation with Ben Silberman, the CEO of Pinterest, and Ben said, you know, it's like all these guys out here, all these women out here who are leaders who we look up to, they all have this one really cool superpower. And it's enabled them to do these amazing things. And they're all different. And I thought that was an amazing insight. And so when I tell you and implore you to find your own means of being successful and to understand there are many different ways to be successful, I will frame it in Ben Silberman's language. Find your individual superpower, what that is, and leverage that and be successful in your own way. If you do those two things, if you are yourself and you manage by deep caring about your people while not worrying about what they think about you, you will be as successful as you can possibly be. Always remember when, you, when you're thinking about communicating clearly with people and your team, you may think people are fooled if you're telling them what they want to hear. They are not fooled. As a leader, you are totally transparent. Your people are looking at you all the time. If you try to lead in some way that isn't true to who you are, they will see it and they will see through it and you will lose the trust of the team, okay? So with those simple pieces of advice, that's my very brief how to lead. Have a great lunch.